Let's get it. The podcast that you need. That's facts. Push it. Push it. Push it. Awesome. And I have uh, Coach Q on the podcast, Quentin McCain. Uh, man, I'm excited to have you on the podcast today, sir. Uh, for, for everybody listening, I actually did a bunch of coaching personally with uh, Coach Q and had massive results, massive progress. He helped me break through so many different barriers that uh that i was going through so it's a pleasure to have you on and and uh thanks for being here today yeah thanks for having me and you know it, it takes two you know uh, uh, you know you're you're a great person with very driven so i mean you made it happen awesome man well thank you thank you for being on the day and uh i want to i want to jump right in and you know kind of get started at the at your origin story of, of what you're doing now and it's where where did it start for you? Where, when, when did you get into personal development? What was the the catalyst that you know sparked that path for you? Right, right. You know, um, that's that's always a, a a difficult question for me, just because I don't feel like there was one single event that did it, um, but more like um, a succession of events, right? So. Um, one of the things that stands out to me is I got a, a CD, an audio CD from one of my friends in 2009. And I listened to that CD and it was from Jim Rohn. Mm. And when I listened to that CD, there was something about it that just clicked with me, you know, and I actually let my mom listen to it <laughs> and, and it clicked with her too. It just really resonated with us. And I could say that was one of the first starting points where my mindset started to say, you know what? I think that maybe I am in control. Maybe the things that he's talking about is real, right? So that was definitely one of the beginning stages for me. Um, and then I would say the next one is I, I worked with uh, ICU burn patients in the Arizona Burn Center for about eight years. Um, and you know, I, I was working in physical therapy there. And when I was working in physical therapy there, um, most of the patients, they didn't want to see me, right. I worked with physical therapy being burned is probably one of the worst things that can happen physically. Right. right. And, uh, so, you know, being in physical therapy, you're like the, you're bringing pain, right. Um, stretching, getting them out of bed, trying to get them rehabilitated. Um, so they didn't want to see you a lot of times. Um, what I started doing is going into my patients' rooms when I wasn't doing therapy and just started talking to them and asking them about their goals and, you know, what their aspiration were, were after they got out of the burn. And sadly, um, a lot of times they're like, what are you talking about? My life's over. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to do anything. I mean, I, I, I can't do anything now. I'm burned. And that hurt me. Right. So. Um, I just started going into their rooms when I wasn't doing therapy, talking into them. And I just kept that up. And long story short, I saw amazing results. And this was without any uh, significant training, just my own personal development I had been doing at that point. And I saw uh, drastic results just in their, their mood, even in their healing, because they then believed uh, in something after being burned. Um, and that is what really catapulted me into... Um, looking into certification programs, coaching, all different modalities. And um, I would say that is the real start when I saw that I can help people not only physically, uh, but mentally as well. Yeah, that's that's really, really cool. And it's, it's crazy how, you know, life puts you in situations to where, you know, you you get confronted with something really, really challenging, but then it kind of brings out your your talents and your gifts, you know, and it's like who who would, you know, maybe if you didn't go through that, you might not be, you know, maybe, maybe you're still coaching, but maybe it wasn't as quick, you know, it, it yeah. just seems like a really powerful, uh, powerful thing. So you were dealing with your burn patients. Uh, you were, you were obviously helping them, but then in the process of that, you know, helping their mentality, which is really like really outside of what, what they were, what you're working, you know, getting paid for yeah. and bringing all this value to people. So what was the next step? I mean, you did that. Did you did you become a coach pretty much right away, or or what was that that process like for you? Yeah, actually, pretty quickly after that realization, um, you know, and this is probably a span of some months. Yeah, um, 
I, I had started looking into um, life coaching because that's something I had heard before, right? It's like life coaching. What's life coaching, right? So I started looking into life coaching and uh, I found a school and I, I went and I got, I, that was my very first uh, certification in life coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, then I went on and took other programs that that school offered, advanced life coaching, uh, some NLP courses, um, things like that. Um, and it just, it just became a positive snowball from there because, you know, once you start delving into something, uh, you meet new people, other realms open up, yeah. right? So um, that's when I got into uh, deeper work, you know, neuro-linguistic programming, hypnotherapy, timeline therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, high-performance um, coaching, right? Um, so my goal was just, um, how do I find something that really works and gives people long lasting change? Right. Um, for myself, first of all, right. Because I, I'm my very first client, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> then, you know, the, the people around me and then my goal was eventually worldwide. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that's just kind of how that, that kept growing and adding on to each other as just, diving deeper and deeper into everything that I can find that seem helpful. That's really cool. I think the, the powerful nugget in all that was you were inspired by working with your patients and then you, you just started taking action. You started, started working it out. I feel like if someone's listening to this and um, maybe they haven't hired a coach or maybe, maybe they're looking to like do something positive in their life and, and they have these thoughts for like, man, I've never done that. Or maybe I have, I have this job, but I feel like I could add value and service somewhere over here. But the, I think the power was, is you just started taking action. And then, and then the, the feedback and the results started coming from all the, you know, all the activities that you were, that you were doing. Did you have any hesitation at all? Like going whenever you were on that path, like, was there any maybe limiting beliefs that you had to break through yourself? I mean, Yes, <laughs> the, the easy answer, <laughs> right? Because I mean, I don't feel that limiting beliefs, um, negative thoughts, will ever permanently go away forever. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that you can kind of tip the scale, right? Because the more successes you get from taking action, um, those are going to add up and build yeah. up your confidence, right? Absolutely. So. You know, fast forward now, I mean, I'm, I'm very quick to take action. I, I strive to take action quickly and make decisions quickly because mm -hmm. now I have a track record of success that says when you take action, um, that's that's giving you results. When you get results, you're getting more and more confidence. Right. Which is going to help you take action the next time. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's huge. That's powerful. But you have to start. So if people are listening to this, you've got to start somewhere. And um, and everybody pretty much starts in the same place, not knowing what the heck is going on. <laughs> so that, that, I mean, you're absolutely right. There's a, there's a quote that says, um, you know, every expert was once a beginner. Right. Absolutely. Yes, sir. That's powerful. So let's let's dive into your coaching program. Coach Q, you, you, you work with. Um, um, to my knowledge, a lot of business owners, high performers, athletes. Um, what is what does your program look like, and what are some of the biggest challenges that people have whenever they're trying to take that that next level in their life? Right. Well, I'll start with that. So, as far as the biggest challenges, um, a lot of times it's productivity, right? It's just being more productive, right? You know what you want to do, but how do you do it more efficiently, right? Mm -hmm. You know, as we uh, have talked about in the past and ha have talked about with many people is, you know, productivity isn't getting more things done, you know, <laughs> it's getting yeah. the right things done consistently, right? right? So productivity, especially with business owners, high performers is, is typically, um, one of the things that we'll work on, right? Another thing is right here, right? Which is the most important, you know, because we're always going to be our, our best friend or our worst enemy, right? Yeah. So um, it's those negative thoughts, right? Negative thoughts, limiting beliefs, right? Um, sometimes it comes from way back when, right? Childhood, right? 
you you were always getting, you know, for example, someone may say, you know, I was always getting second place, you know, I was always getting third place. I, I just never was able to be the top person. Some of those things stay with us, right? And even though you're not that seven-year-old boy, for example, or a seven-year-old girl, right? Um, sometimes that stays with us and we gotta we gotta push that to the background and realize that, hey, now you have the skills, now you have the abilities, now you have the mindset. You can be that woman that you've dreamed of being. You can be that man that you've dreamed of being, that business owner, that father, right? No matter you know what the area is that we're trying to succeed in. That's powerful. I feel like that is something that every every person can deal with. It's like, you know, you've you you you've had some success, you're trying to do something good. You know deep down it's it's meant for you, but you'll have these moments where you feel like like you said, like that little kid in the school room yeah. or, 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 the, or the little kid on the playground that got, you know, hit with the dodgeball or something, you know what I mean? Right. And it's right. like it's crazy how those little insignificant moments can cause a lot of friction for people to push through, you know, and I, I know in our coaching, there was a lot of those moments that came up for me. So they're, it's super powerful. What, um, you know, and I'm not an expert in timeline therapy, but I feel like it's connected to what we just talked about. Is that kind of what you do whenever you're working with a client? Do you use that timeline therapy to help someone push through in those moments or? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I've, I've created my own method, right? Um, so the method is we start with what's called clearing. And this is one-on-one -on -one coaching, but we, we, because I have a, a few different ways that people can come in, uh, you know, because my thing is I don't want anyone to feel like they can't work on their personal development. So, I mean, we have programs starting at our membership at $47 a month, right? It's like, right. if you're serious about making something happen, get in, in a group environment, we meet every single week on zoom, right? Um, yeah. and, so we start even from there, right? Anyone can get in whatever level you're at, right? right. Uh, but with one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, we start with what's called clearing, which will do a, a combination of hypnotherapy, um, neuro-linguistic programming, timeline therapy. And the whole point here is sometimes before you get to what we call like max performance coaching, you have to clear out some things. And that's some of those limiting beliefs, those negative emotions, trauma sometimes, right? Um, things like that. So we do clearing, right? The next step is um, a phase we call focusing on what you want. That's where we'll typically go into the max performance stuff. So now that you've cleared out the things, let's replace those things with the positives that you want. Your goals, um, getting clarity, your energy, your productivity, your, your purpose, your values, right? And fast track that. Right. Um, and then we go into um, what we call higher facto faculties. Right. So we've all learned about the five senses. Right. Which right. actually when it comes to getting what you want and goal setting, your five senses typically are not on your side because, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, your 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 vision will tell you, well, you just seen the, your bank account. Of course, you can't make, you know, Right. eight figures this year right, right. Um, so we can't always trust the five senses when it comes to goal setting and and achievement but what we didn't learn in school a lot of times is what we call the higher faculties or uh what i call personal power these are things like your imagination your will your perception uh your intuition uh reason memory those are the things that we know we have but we're not really tapping into um, the five senses we share with most other animals, right? right. <laughs> These are the things that make us different. So we learn to tap into those things. And then the last phase um, with one-on-one -on -one coaching is what many would call the universal laws of success. So a lot of us have heard of uh, the law of attraction, right? So that's just uh, a sub law of the law of vibration, for example. Um, so we go in some of those universal laws, just like gravity. Um, if you, if you follow those laws, they work for you. Right. Um, so that's pretty much how it works. That's, that's powerful coach Q. Cause I feel like, you know, basically what I heard and what you're saying is, is oftentimes people can get stuck myself included. We can get stuck by what we see day to day. And if we have a goal, that's outside 
of what we see, which typically that's what a goal is, you know, it's, it's hard. It, it can be very challenging for people. Cause it's like, man, you know, this isn't, it's not for me. I don't think I can do it. I'm not made for this. I didn't come from the right neighborhood or the right family, or I don't have the right resources, but what you're, what you're helping people do is tap into their internal resources. So it, yeah. it's, it's like that, that internal, uh, you call it personal power. It's, and that's where some people are, you know, maybe born with more resources than others, but I feel like, mo you know, all of us have that, that internal, you know, toolkit, that internal, you know, resource system that I know working with you and, and doing personal development myself, it's like, man, that is, it's there. Sometimes you don't know it's there, but when you tap into it, you're like, wow, okay, I can see this situation not always negative. I can see a different perspective. And I think that's really, really powerful for people, especially if you're trying to, you know, create something that you've never done before. It's like, yeah. man, you know, there's no, there's no evidence yet. So you have to go out and kind of take, take exactly. action. Exactly. And that's true. Exactly the there's no evidence, right? So um, what is one of the biggest fears, right? Fear of the unknown, right? We don't yeah. know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what are, um, you know, what are some of the biggest, the biggest tools that have been helpful for you? Maybe it's, um, certain books is, you know, you mentioned the law, you know, the universal laws and things like that, which I'm, I'm super, uh, I love that. Like the Napoleon Hill and things like that. If there, has there, is there any books that have been super powerful for you that would be good recommendations for people listening that might be a good starting point or maybe a good catalyst for a breakthrough? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So when it comes to some of those things, which some of those could be a little deeper, but, um, I kind of like going to, um, some of the older things, right? Because a lot of what we'll hear today, uh, even in the really good, um, you know, speakers and coaches, um, have been watered down from some of those older ones. So like, uh, you know, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, right? Um, there's, uh, an old one, Neville Goddard, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, Thomas Troward, um, some of those guys, um, just kind of research those, research those, you'll find some of the, those books and it, and it goes really deep into, um, what we can really do with, with this powerful thing we have, you know, uh, in our head. That's powerful. That's awesome. And I think that's always a good, a good start. I know for me, Think and Grow Rich was, I read that where I was given that book, I was a personal trainer. This was in 2000 and I think it was like 2007 or 2008. And I had a client give me this book and I was so, I had no awareness on anything, you know what I mean? And I was just trying to, you know, work out and drink protein shakes. And yeah. <laughs> this book, this book literally sat in my room for like four years. And then in 2012, when I, uh, I had some some challenges and, and some th different things that happened. I was like, man, I'm, I'm gonna check this book out. And uh, that book was just, it was like, it was like I was given that book, you know, and I, I was ready for it at that time. But it was really, really cool. And Think Grow Rich was a super powerful book for me. You also have a book, uh, Coach Q. It is called Think on These Things. Do uh, you want to elaborate more on what that is? How you came across, uh, came about writing that book, and, and uh, how it's helpful for others. Yeah. And, you know, this is always a, a pretty cool story and, and can be inspiring for some because I got to tell you, when I started writing this book and I wrote it with my mom, by the way, she's my co-author. So awesome. uh, a lot of people don't know that, which is pretty cool. But um, when we started writing this book, we had no idea how to write a book. You know, we didn't have any connections. We didn't know anything about writing, anything about editing editing. Um, we didn't know anything about any of it. Right. But we just focused on what we wanted, which is what I tell a lot of people focus on what you want and start taking steps towards that. And you'll get there. So we just started writing. We start writing. That's all we did. So we started writing the book in 2011. And just to give you some perspective of how much we didn't know what we were doing, we didn't finish it until 2016. Okay. And I admit we weren't um, extremely consistent in the beginning. You know, yeah. part of it is like sometimes procrastination is you just don't know what to do. You know, right. it's not exactly. that you don't want to do it. Yeah. Uh, we just were like, we don't freaking know, right? Yeah. 
So it took us from 2011 to 2016. But that last year, we really said, all right, we said we're writing a book. We're writing a freaking book, right? So we set up time every week. And we allotted that time. We time blocked, which is really important, too, when you want to accomplish something. And we knocked out the time to write the book. And we wrote the book. And we still didn't know what to do. Okay, now we we have this book written on a laptop, right? On a computer. Yeah. Still didn't know what to do. We didn't know anything about publishers, anything. And we ended up going to a conference. And at that conference, I randomly, he wasn't even sitting by us. Randomly during one of the breaks, met a guy who ended up introducing us to uh, the publisher. Wow. And that was in February um 2016 when we met him and the book was published by i believe april unbelievable unbelievable so it was like it's crazy because you guys you know obviously when you're when you first start writing a book i mean i've it, it, i mean how do you know right if you if you haven't wrote a book before and then you you guys pretty much made a commitment saying we're going to get this done and then you go to the conference and then boom you meet the you meet the publisher who's going to publish the book so i feel like that's just that's the power of the commitment and the power of taking action and then also leveraging those universal laws like you like you were mentioning. It's like, That's man, right. like you, you guys were ready and the person was there. Um, so let's go a little bit into the book. What is the book about and uh, how does it how do, how do you how, how was it helpful for you? Because obviously you wrote it. So it was probably it came from you. What was uh, what was the main the main content of the book? Yeah. So this book is meant for daily motivation. OK, so anyone can can read this book. I don't care if you've been studying personal development for years or if you're just starting. So and we made it just that way. So it's for daily motivation. You only read one page a day. You read one page a day that gives you a, a message um, for that day. OK, a message to focus on uh, or, or think on. That's why it's think of think on these things. Right. And that message comes with a journal. So for that one day, um, you will write down goals, action steps or something related to that message for that day. And so we're putting the power of consistency, uh, daily motivation and also the power of journaling, which is, you know, very, very powerful in itself all in one book. So it's like a 99 day uh, transformation. That's powerful. I, I think the, the consistency factor, I think is one of the most powerful things for people, even for myself. It's like, man, if I can stay consistent doing something long enough, the breakthroughs happen. What do you think is the biggest, um, the biggest, the biggest challenge for people to stay consistent. I feel like it's a common thing for a lot of people, even, even high performers, people that are successful. And when, they, when, and when they're trying to do something consistent, oftentimes people may fall, you know, on and off the track. What do you, what are some of the biggest things that cause people to do that? Do you think? Well, I would say for one, as simple as it may sound, uh, do you have the time blocked out? <laughs> you you know, because yeah. a lot of times uh, we'll say, well, yeah, I know, you know, I said I'm going to work out every day. Right. Um, yeah. At some point today, I'll work out. And then the day gets ahead of us. We get a couple emergency calls from the office or, yeah. or our business. Right. And before you know, it, it's 9 p.m. and we didn't work out. Right. right. Um, so I think that's key is having it on your calendar. And this goes for personal things as well, because a lot of times we feel like, OK, I know all my business stuff or my work stuff needs to be on the calendar. But then we don't plan our personal things that are very important to us that we right. want to, you know, uh, you know, date night. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it's sometimes for some reason it feels weird for us to plan things like that. We feel like, it, for example, love should just happen. Right. Yeah. But, Success is a planned event, right? Whether it's personal or professional. That's positive. That's that's powerful, man. Success is a planned event. I think that is that's a hundred percent true. It's not it's not accidental. I think a lot of times people may see someone who's getting progress, who's having success, and it may seem like they just stumble into it. But no, no one stumbles into success. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. So let's go into more. Uh, you know, your coaching program is the Leader's Edge. Um, 
dive into kind of what you offer. I know you mentioned the monthly, you have a monthly uh, subscription where people can join in even at a low investment to, to kind of get their feet wet. What are some of the things you guys cover in the program? Yeah. So yeah, I'll just tell you about that one. Um, so the company is called the leader's edge. And what we do there is we just want to deliver high quality, high value coaching and training at a low investment, you know, times are times are crazy, right? We've gone through all kinds of things, right? Pandemic and, you know, it's just been a, a whirlwind, right? Economy, you name it. Yeah. So we want, we, we don't want there to be anything to hold anyone back from getting personal development. So nice. that, that's why we did this. So we, we do it at $47 a month where we do a weekly training every single week on Thursdays, um, 6 a.m. Arizona time. Um, but all of them are recorded as well. So, you know, if you can't make that time, all of the previous classes we've done as well are recorded and all the classes going forward will be recorded. And um, the, the concept here is we're going to internalize what we're learning. So we do a new topic every single month. OK, we do a brand new topic every single month. And it's not like, you know, you go to school, you learn something, you take a test and then you're on to the next topic and you forgot about the last one. So with with what we do here is week one, we um, do a straight teaching. My business partner and I, his name's Jerry. We do a straight teaching of the topic. Week two, uh, we have worksheets and we break down the topic so you can begin to internalize the material. Week three. We do a mastermind. Everyone gets involved. You know, you have the community there. And uh, I always say sometimes the best things are caught rather than taught. So you'll yeah. learn from others, right? Yeah. And then four, uh, we do a Q&A based on implementation. So you really get time with each of these subjects uh, to internalize what we learn. That's powerful. I, I, I feel like sometimes we can get information maybe too quickly. And then it's like, you know, we, we get some of it, we don't, but I, I like your system of what you're doing is, is you're teaching. But then the second part of it is, is that they're individually, they're going through it themselves, kind of going through the question so they can, like you said, really grasp it, internalize the concept. Cause I feel like for me, when I was, when I'm really able to move the needle, it's when I, I get it, you know, and when I don't get it, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do it. I may, do it like one or two times or I may sort of understand it. But when it's like, man, the light bulb goes off, I'm like, oh, wow, that's it. That's all I have to do, you know, <laughs> and, and, it, and that's where it becomes, you know, kind of part of who you are as a, as a person. It becomes easier. Uh, so I think it's a really, really cool uh, way to kind of break down, you know, break down the program for people. Um, how can how can people reach you, Coach Q? What's the what's the best way that people can reach out to you and uh you know, maybe do some coaching with you. What's, what's the best way? Yeah. So, um, on all social media, I'm at coach Q McCain. That's Q M C C A I N at coach Q McCain on all social media. Um, and also through our website, which is, uh, www.theleadersedge.online. Awesome. Not .com, <laughs> dot .com. Um, Yep, the leaders edge dot online. Awesome. So twenty twenty three is coming up. What's uh what's what's Coach Q got in the in the pipeline? What what are the things that you want to accomplish for next year? Um, well, honestly, one of my main goals is to grow this membership program because I've seen what it's been doing in the group. Um, we have tons of amazing testimonials, you know, that I'd be willing to share with anyone. Um, and I think, I think that's the, the way, you know, it's, it's low enough entry, um, but we're given high value. So people really are getting it right. Yeah. So I, I'd really like to grow that group. That's awesome. And I think the world, uh, the world needs more of that. I mean, especially like what you were saying earlier is there's so many different things happening with the economy and, uh, you know, just all kind of stuff, right. There's always stuff, you know, and, and, and. But we need more people like yourself, your business partner that are 
you know, um, giving giving value for people and, and making it where they can have access to it. I mean, I think that's really, really important because the, uh, the accessibility is some people that really, really need it aren't able to do it, you know, for multiple reasons. And then you guys giving those people an opportunity is huge. So um, I wish you guys much success for 2023, Coach Q. It was a pleasure having you on the podcast today. Um, I got so much value from our coaching. Man, we coached for it was almost a year, you know. Yeah, it was a while. Yeah, and uh, it was just it was life changing, uh, transformative, and uh, so I'm just really, really excited for what you and, and your partner are doing for y'all's program in 2023. But it was a pleasure having you on the day, sir. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Awesome. Thanks, Coach Q. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye.